Hello there, Des Kelly here from GMIT Letter Frack, and welcome along to another of our DCG SolidWorks tutorials. Just before we begin, if you'd like to find out more information about the degree programs we offer in furniture design, wood technology or teacher education, then please see our Facebook or Twitter pages. So this is the project we're about to complete. It's a simple bracket and by completing this assignment we will um, get exposure to SolidWorks sketching. We'll use the extruded boss base feature to generate the main solid. We'll use the fillet feature to round over and ease some of the corners. The extruded cut feature to cut out those two circular holes. Uh, as you can see there's a chamfer on the bottom, the base of the bracket, so we'll use the chamfer feature to apply that. And of course you can see the solid itself is symmetrical, so rather than drawing it all, we will draw half it and use the mirror feature to double or mirror it over for us. And then we'll just simply add some material appearances at the end. So let's begin. So moving over to SolidWorks, if you open up a new part by going to File, New, pressing Part and then OK, you should get a nice part like this. And to begin, we will start a sketch of a line on the front plane. Now I like to draw while looking at 90 degrees to the plane, so I'll press the space bar and select this Normal 2 icon. So what I'm going to do is draw the approximate shape of the bracket. So starting at the origin, I'm going to click the first point of the line and move across to the right. Now that yellow horizontal line marker shows me that that line is about to be horizontal and it's going to be locked in the horizontal position. That's important. So click. Now that yellow vertical icon shows me that this new line is about to be locked in the vertical position. So try your best to draw this approximate shape but make sure that all the lines remain either vertical or horizontally aligned. And there we have it. So that's the approximate shape of half of the bracket. Uh, I'm going to tap escape now to close the line command. And to define or dimension the geometry I have, I'm going to call up the Smart Dimension tool. So clicking the baseline and positioning the dimension, I will give that a value of 80. 80, enter. This line to the right is going to get a value of 20. This vertical component is going to be 10 mil. The overall height from that point to that point will be 130. And this line is going to be 40. Now ultimately what I want is for all the geometry to turn this black color and for it to say fully defined down here. Anything that is in blue in the sketch is still not fully defined. And if you want to see what dimension or what definition it needs, simply drag a point that's blue and you can see how it behaves. In my case, this line has not been given a value. So I can do this in one of two ways. The first way is to use the Smart Dimension tool to tell this line to be 20. Or what I can also do is tap Escape to make sure the memory is cleared. And by holding Control, I can select more than one line, in this case those two lines. Now that those two lines are selected, all the possible constraints or relations that can be added between them list over here, and I want the collinear constraint. Now both of those lines are collinear, or in alignment with each other. So press the green tick to approve that, and just to test it, if I double click this dimension and put in a value of 40, now both lines will move to 40. So there's my sketch, I'm happy with that, so I will close the sketch using this icon. I will then go to Features, Extruded Boss Base, and extrude that shape out to a value of 60. So you can do it by dragging the handle in the graphics window or setting it to 60 over here. So I want to fill it the two corners where the vertical and horizontal sections meet. So to do that, I will call up the Fillet feature. Be sure I select the first type of fillet, which is a constant size fillet. I want the value to remain at 10 mil, and I will select that line there, and that line there. And I'm happy with that, so press the green tick to approve the fillet, and look at the changes. Now at the top I also want a fillet, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a full round fillet. 
So I still will call up the fillet feature, but this time I will select the fourth type of fillet, which is the full round fillet. So if I click in the top box over here and select this left face, click in the center box over here and select the top face, and then click in the bottom box over here, rotate the model and select the right hand face. It will automatically do the work for me and it will decide what's the best radius fillet to push over there for me. So finally, let's just drill the hole uh, out of the top of the bracket. So to do that, I need a sketch on this surface that's highlighted. So I can select the surface, select sketch, then circle, and now I am drawing on that surface. So I'm just going to hit the space bar and normal two. And sometimes it does not pick up the center point of the circle. I want this circle to be concentric with the radius or the circle that's existing there already. So if it does not pick up the center point, simply hover over the edge of the circle for a moment. And just let it think for a moment and eventually, after a couple of seconds of hovering over the circle, the center point will appear. So snap onto that center point, draw any size circle for now, and we will smart dimension it, in this case, to be diameter 30. Close the sketch. Now it's a little hard to see the grey sketch against the grey material, but the sketch is there. So if you now go to Features, Extruded, Cut, and just set the value to anything greater than 10 will do. Press the green tick. Now you have the bracket like that. Let's now add a chamfer to the base of the bracket. So to do that, access the chamfer command, which is visible when you press the drop down arrow under fillet, chamfer. Let's set the size of the chamfer to be five millimeters. And don't pick all three, all four edges. I only want to pick three of the edges because I want to mirror this in a moment. And I don't want this side to be chamfered. So once you've pressed all of those, it should give you the preview like that. Press the green tick to approve, and there we have it. So that is half of our bracket. Let's now use the mirror feature to get the remainder of our bracket. So the mirror feature is here. Activate it. The first thing I can see that's highlighted in blue is the mirror face or plane. I can either select a plane from the feature manager or click a face or plane in the model itself. In our case, this one. I then have to start selecting the features I want to mirror. And it's important that you select all the features. I'm going to deliberately make an error here and select the cut extrude. And you can see as I start picking them, they appear here. So if I try to approve that, it won't actually rebuild. It will throw up an error for me. I also need to mirror the original boss extrude, the fillets, and the fillet 2. Now what I will do in this case is I will leave off fillet 2 just to show you how to go back and fix it should you make the mistake. So I'll press the green tick and you can see it has mirrored everything except this fillet, fillet 2 in my case. So what I will do is find the new entry to the feature manager, mirror 2 in our case, right click it and select edit feature. Now I can simply make sure this features to mirror box is activated and add fillet 2 to it by clicking. Now if I press the green tick, our whole model should have updated. So very quickly what I'm going to do is call up the Appearances, Scenes and Decals tab. Make sure I expand the Appearances Color section. Make sure I expand the Plastic section. And I want to put a high gloss plastic onto this. And I will drag the yellow plastic onto the component. And make sure I apply it to the entire part. And there we have it. So please see a future video which I will upload which will demonstrate how to apply um, all the various different types of materials and also how to generate high quality renders. But for now, that's our bracket. So thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. If you want to learn more about SolidWorks, please see the GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel where you'll see a whole range of other useful SolidWorks tutorial videos.